Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we are going to cover the basics of loops and we are going to use a loop inside a Salesforce flow to count the number of contact records which are related to an account. You could think of this like doing a roll-up summary where we are rolling up the total number of contacts for any given account inside Salesforce. And so we're in Salesforce and I just have a developer org open. I made a brand new field in this developer org on the account object called number of contacts. And so what we are going to have our loop do is we are going to loop through all of these contacts here and we're going to count them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, there's four contacts on this account and we're going to enter that number here in the number of contacts field. So I'll get started by going to the setup menu and opening up the uh, flow section by typing flows into the quick find. And I'm just going to make a new flow. So loops are a really common uh, logical operator and they're available with every flow type. But in this case, I'm going to use a scheduled trigger flow so that we can kick our loop off at a specific time. So on the flow canvas, I prefer to use the freeform layout. You can definitely follow follow along with the auto layout. It's really just a matter of what shows up on the canvas. I like the freeform layout because I get to see all the elements over here. There are certainly times when the auto layout shines and that's with really complex flows. Um, but in this case, we're gonna keep it simple. And the first thing we need to do with our scheduled triggered flow is set the schedule. And so our schedule is really simple. It's just gonna be today's date. So today is the sixth and I will set the time um, Right now it's 12.17 local time. I'm gonna set this flow to kick off at 12.30 p.m. And we can just wait if I get done um, in faster than 13 minutes. We'll set the frequency to once. I'm gonna press done. And then I'm gonna click save just so I can save my flow to the canvas. So flow, I will call this loop example and press save. And the object that we're going to run on is the account object. And this is gonna be a really good way to explain loops. So for the account object, we want it to run on every single object, this particular flow. So I'm just gonna say run flow for all accounts and press done. And then I will save that as well. Now let's get into loops. So loops allow us to perform an action multiple times um, on a series of records and it's generally the same action that we're performing and we're just repeating it uh, on a group of records. So the key thing there is that in order for a loop to run we need a collection or a group of records and so we will start by getting our collection. Now in this case we are counting the number of contacts so if you had to guess what our collection would be or what it, records it might consist of what sorts of objects do you think would be in our collection? If you said contacts, then you're right. So specifically, we need all of the contacts that are related to any given account. And we'll get that by using a get data element and dragging that to the canvas. You can also just press the plus button if you're on the auto layout, but I'm gonna call this uh, get related contacts. And here we are going to get records of the contact object type. And this is important, uh, our next step, because this is how we narrow down the contacts to be only those ones which are related to our current account. The way we're going to do that is by using the account ID field, which is present on the contact, and telling the flow that the account ID of the contacts we're looking for must equal the account ID on which the loop, or excuse me, the flow is currently running. In order to access that ID, I'm going to use the global variable here in the flow builder. I'm going to select record account, and then I'm going to scroll down and find the ID field. And I see it right here. I'll select that. And the reason that the global variable is for the account object is because that's the object which we chose to set up our flow on. If we had chosen to run our flow on the opportunity object or the case object, then the record would, uh, the global variable record would either be the opportunity or the case, depending on the object that we chose in our configuration at the start. Now the second part of the get records is down here at the bottom, 
where we need to define how many records to store. Because we're creating a record collection, we are going to store all of the records and then press done. And so now we have our start and we have our get element and we need to connect the two. So I'm going to just drag a connecting line there. And now we get to do our loop. Um, so I'm going to drag a loop element to the canvas. And we will call this loop through contacts. In this case, we are uh, looping through a particular group of records, which is the contacts. And the action that we're going to perform is counting. So we'll start at zero and we'll just count one, two, three for every single item in our collection. So our collection variable is set up automatically by the flow because we checked the box that said we wanted to store uh, all of the records that we found Salesforce flow will create a collection for us that we can select from in our loop so select that you can specify a direction in terms of which way you iterate through the collection in this case it's not important um, sometimes it may be but here it's not so we'll leave it as is and press done and now I need to connect the get records with the loop. And now we have to define the actions that the loop will take. And the loop will repeat this action for every single record that is in the collection. In this case, it will repeat the action for every single contact record that we found. So in order to proceed, I need a way to count and keep track of the count. In order to do that, I'm gonna to go to the toolbox and press manager and I'm going to define a new resource. This resource will be a variable and I'm going to call this contact count and the data type of this variable will be a number. The decimal places I will change to zero and the default value will also be zero. And so this number here will represent the number of contacts that we have counted in our loop so far and we always want it to start at zero so we're going to put in the default value of zero. I'm going to press done and then the second thing that I'm going to do is click on the elements tab and then drag an assignment logical operator to the canvas. And so this is how we define the action that we want our loop to perform. And so I'm going to call this update count by one and then here I'm going to select my contact count variable the operator I'm going to select is add and then the value that I want to add I'm going to type in the number one and press done and so now I can connect my loop to this assignment such that for every item in the loop this assignment element will run and it will essentially say for the first contact, update the contact count by one. So we go from zero to one. Then the loop will go back to the next item in the collection and say, okay, for the second contact, update the contact count by one. Since it was already at one, it'll now go to two. And this process will repeat or loop through every contact in our collection. So in order to tell the loop what to do, I'm just gonna connect the loop to the assignment. And I'm gonna say for each item in the collection, I need you to do this assignment logic. Then after the assignment updates the count by one, I'm going to point the assignment back to the loop. And this is why it's called a loop because it kind of makes a circle and goes around and around. Finally, now that the loop uh, has processed every item, it will, I guess, repeat this loop, assignment, loop, assignment, loop until we've moved through every single contact record. Once we've done, or once we've finished with every contact record, we can drag an update element to the canvas. And we'll call this update account. And because we started on the account object in our flow, we can use the account record global variable, which kicked off the flow, and tell the flow builder to update the number of contacts field and set it to be equal to our finished contact count. I'll press done and then I'm going to connect the loop to the update records and you can see that there's a text thing here that says after the last item so there's always two connecting points for the loop the first is this for each item 
where we are defining the actions that we want the loop to perform on all of the records in our collection. Once the loop finishes iterating over every item in our collection, we define a second path where we say what the loop should do next after it has iterated on the last item. So in this case, we are looking up all the contacts related to this account. We are updating our count variable by one for every single contact. And then once we've finished that, we take the updated count and we put it back on the account record. So I'm gonna press save. And the flow is going to run in three minutes from now. So I'm gonna activate the flow and we'll pause the video. And then three minutes from now when the flow kicks off, we would expect that this number of contacts field is updated by the scheduled trigger flow and it should say the number four for um, this particular account. And then we can look at all of the accounts in Salesforce and ensure that it has run on every single account. So I'll see you back here in a couple minutes. And we're back. So let's look at the details for this account page. And I'm gonna refresh because we would expect our flow to have run in the background. And so now when we look at the details, we should see the number four, and we do. So that looks really good. So our loop ran, it got all of the contacts related to this account, it incremented our variable by one for each contact in the collection, and then once it finished going through every single one of the contacts, it took the final variable value and entered it in this field. We can confirm that that happened for every account in Salesforce by coming to um, any account list view, my recently viewed happens to have 13 accounts and that's fine. And I'm going to change that actually to the all accounts view so that I can add a field to the uh, list view here. So I will select fields to display and I'm just gonna find that number of contacts field here and move it over uh, onto the fields to display list. And we see that it ran. So for every account in Salesforce, there's now a number of contacts present and if we are to open up any of the accounts, for example, the S4 Salesforce account here, it says two in the number of contacts. So when we look here, we would expect to find two contacts and we do. So that is it for the first example. You know, We learned that you can uh, perform the action of counting records with a loop. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see, and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. If you're interested in learning more about Salesforce flows, make sure to check out my course on Udemy. There's a link in the description. It has over eight hours of in-depth Salesforce flow tutorials designed to turn you into a flow ninja. With that said, have a great day.